Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Angel Storm. I'm the founder of Ashes to Beauty Ministries and today I want to talk to you about some of the common feelings that you can go through when you're experiencing the discard cycle when you're dealing with a narcissist. So narcissistic abuse usually happens in phases and the first one is idealization where everything is about you, you're just amazing, you cannot believe that this person is so into you. Um, and everything seems to be going right. You guys have so much in common. You guys just click. The energy is amazing between you. And that is followed by the devaluation stage. And so in this stage, the narcissist is going to find everything about you that is wrong, regardless of what kind of uh, achievements or promotions or great things that are happening in your life at the time. The narcissist is going to be able to show you a hundred areas that you didn't succeed in. He's going to start putting you down, shaming you, maybe calling you names. It could even be um, physically abusive at this point. And then finally, the discard stage, which is where the narcissist leaves you or just ghosts you or whatever happens where he just removes himself from that situation and you don't get any closure and you're just left wondering what happened. This was an amazing relationship. Everything seemed to be going awesome. And then there was this crazy devaluation stage and now you're in the discard uh, part of that cycle. And usually when you're going through this part of the cycle, the narcissist hasn't given you closure. So he doesn't actually tell you what is going on or the reason for why he's leaving is just uh, very bland, right? And it could involve blaming you so you're just too crazy or um, you know, I'm just not meant to be with you. I need to find somebody who's on my level or whatever the reason is that the narcissist gives to you. It's not going to really make much sense. And in the meantime, your feelings for the narcissist were genuine in the idealization phase when the narcissist was love bombing you and telling you how amazing and awesome you are. You were really feeling those feelings those weren't just words to you you were actually invested emotionally mentally physically into the relationship and so when the devaluation phase came around you were really wondering what is happening and then to be just discarded out of the blue out of nowhere you're really wondering like what happened what was real and you're searching for closure because that's how healthy relationships work. That's how normal people respond and react to um, uh, somebody that you deeply cared about leaving your life. And so when you're in the um, discard phase, I think it's really important for you to understand that first of all, narcissists don't think like you think. Their brains in, a, in their body, their physical organ does not work the same way that yours does. Second of all, I always talk about how narcissism is a spiritual uh, issue first. It always is. It's not just that their brains don't aren't wired correctly and don't work correctly. This is a spiritual issue. And so when you understand that, you're also going to understand that their, uh, their energy isn't going to line up with yours because you're drawing from two separate sources. The third thing to remember as well is that because this is a spiritual issue first, you're connected to the narcissist and he's going to be able to tell when you are in the process of moving on. So when the narcissist has discarded you, he's um, left you, you don't know why, you haven't received any closure, but you're starting to heal, you're starting to recover, you're starting to move on. It's at that point that you can expect the narcissist to show back up. You're going to get a phone call from him, a text message, whatever, out of the blue from him. You haven't heard from him, maybe if, even in a long, long period of time, months or even years. The narcissist knows when you're at the point of recovery, when you're at the turning point in your life of moving on. And it's that point that he's going to contact you. It's designed that way to get you back hooked into the cycle of abuse that narcissists have and it's also meant to make you question all of the progress that you've done so far you know maybe all of the things that you thought about him weren't true maybe he has changed maybe this time will be different all of those kinds of reasonings that come to your mind uh, the narcissist knows it and he's counting on you 
to go with your emotions and what you want to have happen over reality, over the facts of what actually is occurring, over what's going to happen the next time you let him in. And so he's hoping that he has the trauma bond formed between you two through those cycles. Those stages that the narcissist takes you through are on purpose. This was thought out. This is not random. This is not the narcissist just happened to do this to you. Those were those things were actually planned um, as a form of systemic abuse. And so the, when the narcissist comes back around, when he knows that you're in the process of recovery, it's important that you uh, remember his actions and not his words. This is something that I tell people all of the time, my clients. The first thing is when they're on the fence about whether or not they're with a narcissist, whether or not they should leave the narcissist. I just say, stop listening to what they say. Do not pay attention to their words and just start observing their actions because their actions are gonna tell you what's actually in their heart, what is actually going on inside of them. See, I can say whatever words I know you wanna hear and there can be nothing behind them. There's no actual change behind them. You'll know when, when they're serious by when their actions change and when it's done over a period of time. There's been studies that show that six months is the way, is the length of time that is needed to see if somebody has actually changed or not. So if they contact you and they want to just jump right back into the idealization phase, I highly recommend, first of all, that you don't go down that road at all again. But if you really want to see whether or not this person is serious, whether or not they've changed, then give it six months. You know, see if they can maintain this behavior with your boundaries and respect your boundaries uh, for six months. You're going to find out quickly uh, what's actually going on there and you're going to find out what's really inside of them. So I want to back up now just a little bit and kind of talk about what, what to do when you are in the process of realizing that you've been discarded, realizing that the whole thing that you've been through was a facade, realizing maybe even for the first time what a narcissist is, or that you have been in a, in a narcissistic relationship this entire time. When that happens, you can start to get into cycles of uh, questioning your own self, whether wondering what you did to deserve this, um, you know, why did this happen to you? How could you not see this sooner? Um, it, maybe there is something wrong with me. Maybe the narcissist is saying the truth to me. Maybe there really is something going on with me. This is an issue internal to me. And so when you start to get into that cycle, it's really important to, first of all, recognize it. Um, recognize that you are kind of repeating the same thoughts. You are repeating the same questions to yourself. And uh, as soon as possible, stop doing that recognize it because what you're doing is you're allowing energy to, to just keep recycling in you. That's negative energy, by the way. This is not positive energy. This isn't going to create something. This is going to destroy something. And so it's just going to keep cycling, cycling, cycling. And as it does, destroying more and more of yourself, your identity, your self-esteem, your self-worth, all of these things are going to continue to deteriorate as you allow this cycle to continue. So recognize that you're in that cycle and find a way for that energy to leave. Get that energy out of yourself. So stop thinking about these things in your mind. Stop allowing them to seep into your soul and into your spirit and allowing to damage and destroy you in, inside, from inside out. So um, for me, um, when, when I was going through this, I would recognize that I was doing this to myself and I would also recognize that I was partnering with the same spirit that the narcissist was. I would recognize that at that point, we wanted the same thing. We wanted to, that energy I was creating was destroying myself, which is exactly what the narcissist wanted. I would recognize it for what it was. I would recognize that energy uh, uh, as being something that was coming to destroy me and not to build me up, not to restore me. And so I would stop the cycle and I had made a list of things that I would do after that. I had a list of um, declarations that I would read, affirmations over my life and over my destiny. I would um, go into worship and prayer. For me, this was very transformational. And 
I would just remove that energy from around me, from in me and around my, my space. I would um, take back control over my atmosphere. I'm not here to just get swept along by whatever comes my way. I am the thermostat in my life. I set the atmosphere for when I walk into a room, whether I own that house or not, I set the thermostat. I am in control of my life because the light that's within me is too bright to be hidden. So I started doing these things and I was consistent with them. Again, I had a list of um, of these things that I would do, um, and I, I had put it on my uh, bulletin board above my desk in my office. And I would, again, just make sure that I went through every step. I knew what would work for me, and I continued to be uh, dedicated to seeing that process through every time I would find myself, every time I would find myself in that cycle. Because what happens is, it's like when you are trying to change the way that you eat. If you're trying to change the way that you eat, and it's like, oh, I'll just have one cheat day, but you haven't formed the connections in your brain and in your body to break that cycle after having that cheat day or that cheat meal, it does the same thing in, your, in the spirit realm. So you need to be able to say, like, no, I'm dedicated to this. I'm not allowing this to continue on any further. That is not to say that you shouldn't feel your feelings, right? So this is when I realized that this pattern was destructive. I would immediately recognize it and I would do those things I just listed to you. On the other hand, if I was feeling sad, if I was feeling um, disappointed or angry, whatever I was feeling, I allowed myself to feel that. I never told myself, you know, I can't feel that or to just forget about it. You know that you can <laughs> store up that energy and it's destined to come back. You're designed to be whole. You're not designed to be carrying these broken and fragmented pieces of uh, uh, things that never got touched or dealt with, you know, which a lot of us carry even from childhood. And so you, it's gonna constantly be coming back up. Your soul is destined, is made that way to bring that up to you, to show you and point to you the internal issues that you need to deal with. And so I would allow myself to feel those things, but I would never allow it to get into the destructive cycle. So if I was feeling sad, I would allow myself to feel sad. I would f figure out why I was feeling sad, and I would say, I'm feeling sad because, but when I started to feel as though, oh, I'm feeling sad because I did this, because I, when I started to take on the condemnation and the shame and the guilt, I would immediately stop that, that train of thought, and I would turn it back into the positives. You know, again, I would go back to the affirmations and the declarations that I had about myself. I would tell myself that all things are working out for my good. I would tell myself that I've become wiser. I would tell myself that this uh, situation that I've gone through is going to serve not only myself, but it's going to help so many other people, that I'm going to get through this, that this dark night is not going to last forever. I would say those things to myself before allowing myself to go back and feel uh, other feelings. If I was feeling anger, I would do the same things and I would sit with it until it was healed. Oh, it's easy to stuff things and it's easy to ignore things. The hard work is sitting with your pain. The hard work is sitting with your anger. The hard work is looking back on things that you could have done differently, but you'll never be able to go back and do differently. You can only decide to make new changes and new decisions moving forward. That's the hard work. And the sooner that you can give into the, the uh, recovery process, the sooner you're gonna be able to be healed and move on and have a whole life. And so I know this is kind of a long video, but I really wanted to um, talk to you about this process because um, too many people do some of the work. Do, they do some of the work, but they never get fully healed. They're never able to fully have peace with their past. They're never fully able to uh, get into a healthy relationship again. And so this is creating not only a, a half-lived life for them, but it's bad for society as a whole to have these broken people, so many broken people walking around and not enough people who, who can help them heal. And so, um, if you can learn to to do this in your own self, to learn how to heal your own self and uh, then be able to teach others, 
it's just the most amazing uh, gift possible that you could give to somebody and it's the most amazing experience that you can be a part of as well and the great thing is that if you're a parent you're going to be able to teach your own children how to do this and how to um, again set the boundaries you know for their own life so that even if they enter into an atmosphere where they're being bullied or they're not being treated the way that they should be treated that they know how to not only respond to that situation in the moment but that they are able to not allow those things to seep into their souls and into their spirits and cause them to become fragmented and to have their identity questioned. So um, yes, I hope that this video has helped you. I hope it has um, enlightened you, brought some things maybe to mind that um, perhaps you need to still heal or work through. And um, you know, Ashes to Beauty, I started it again based off of my own experiences and things that I wanted to give back to people uh, that I wish I would have had uh, when I was going through um, both the abuse and the recovery process and so I have lots of different ways that you can connect with me that you can join uh, my my community I have different book clubs and just different mentorship programs and stuff like that which you can find in the description of this video if you're interested if you feel like having a community around you um, would be helpful I also do individual one-on-one -on -one coaching so again all of that information in the description of this video and I hope this has blessed you I hope it helps you heal I hope it helps you see the truth and light at the end of this dark night and that you are able to live your best life. You know, when you heal completely, you're gonna be not only so proud of yourself, you're gonna have a life that you love waking up to every morning. And there is nothing that anything can fill that hole for. You know, not money, not a job, not a certain type of family. So I hope that all of you will sit with your feelings and will do the hard work of healing the broken places so that you can be whole and you can give that healing onto others. Again, I'm Dr. Angel Storm and be sure to subscribe to my channel below.